welcome back to my channel if you're new here i'm meg hi i read books and i'm gay and that's about all we do here this is it this is the video i have been wanting to film since i was about 10 the bookshelf tour you guys are gonna see all of these i'm gonna take you through the dvds at the top as well and all of my penguin english library books and it's very very exciting a lot of people have asked for this for a very long time and i have never been asked frankly to do it i was that kid that was watching like christine from Poland bananas books and Katy tastic and jesse frieda and i'd watch their bookshelf tours and i'd want to do one so bad and i'm finally in a place where people want to see it so here we go <laughs> Just a little disclaimer before we begin, I have been collecting books since I was probably about nine, genuinely. Um, my parents are massive readers, I was brought up reading, and uh, some of these books I genuinely have owned since I was probably about nine. Some of them are also in the attic, so I don't- these aren't all the books I own. Some are at uni, so if I uh, point out that there was a book that should be there, probably in my uni room. I also own a lot of books on my Kindle, so this isn't all the books I own, but there's probably about, I wanna say 600. At the last count, it was like 590 something, and I've bought a lot of books since then. So. As you can see, they are organized as a rainbow. I've never organized my books in rainbow order before. I didn't think I'd like it very much because like all the series is split up and stuff. But honestly, like I love how it looks and I love, and I know where all the books are. I know where my books are. All my DVDs on the top, which you can't see, but you'll see in a minute are also organized in a rainbow. Very gay of me, I know. But yeah, my bookshelf has been through a lot of iterations over time. But yeah, I have since created a little wall of books. Well, it's not very little, it's quite large. So every time I'm in here, every time I come home from uni is my happy place. Here you go. Welcome to the 2022 bookshelf tour. Okay, so a quick overview of my shelves. I have four Billy bookcase shelves. I've done from Ikea and they're the cheapest and most sturdy. They work the best. And then I have all of my DVDs and middle-aged actress stuff up at the top. And over here, I have my little chair with all my cushions. I have a stool because I am too short to reach the top of my own bookshelf. All of my bookshelves have fairy lights on them. They are literally just battery operated fairy lights from Amazon. Not gonna lie, this shelf here needs new batteries. You're gonna have to ignore that. But yeah, this is my little book corner. I have my TV up there for all of my DVD. And then I have just like flower garland up at the top, which is just hooked on with command strips, which is also from Amazon. That's an overview of my bookshelf. I think the best place to start is probably up at the top. So I will start at the top and we will work our way down. This video is probably going to be really long. I apologize. I'm not going to pick all the books out. Like I'm not going to go through every one. I might point out what every book is, but I'm not going to draw them all out. But if there are some that have fun stories or like I want you guys to see, I will pull them out and show you them. So yeah. Here we go. I sincerely apologise for the shaking, but like my tripod literally doesn't go this high and uh, I'm still on a stool because I'm too short to reach up to the top of my bookshelf. So uh, as you can see here, I have a little Galadriel pop figure and my mini sea perfumes. If you may not know, Kate is the face of Armani Beauty. So this is my little Kate shrine. I then have a pile of magazines with all my women in, so this is Gillian's Hunger magazine. I think this is Kate in Harper's Bazaar. That's Jennifer Saunders in Gay Times. I know. Paloma in Cosmo. Who's that Van? No, Harper's Bazaar must be Gillian. And then Vanity Fair, I think, is Kate. I think there's an Amanda one in there as well. This is Karen Brady. Then I have a Hillary Clinton pop figure because, oh, and I killed her. Because when I was about 15, that was my obsession. I was obsessed with Hillary Clinton. Uh, which you will see a little bit later as well. I have my pile of Switch games. Here is a better view of my little flower garland, which is very on brand, very soft pink fenge. I have a big pile of DVDs, which then go into the rainbow. Basically, all of these DVDs are either Gillian, Kate, Helena, Sarah, Sandy, Rosamond. I have Manifesto, which is Kate, The Proposal, Women Talking Dirty, St Trinians, which has Paloma in it, Suffragette, An Ideal Husband. Our brand is Crisis. This is like three different Sandy ones in one. Keep the Aspatistra flying. This is Meryl Streep, it's complicated. Twelfth Night, I'm Not There, The Post. Elizabeth, which is like a really old DVD case. Where Angels Fear to Tread. And Little Fish. Heaven 66, French and Saunders, which is the full collection. I am obsessed with, with Jennifer Saunders. I got to see French and Saunders live and it was amazing. I have the Merchant Ivory film, so A Room with a View and How It's End. And then my favourite of all time, of course, Ocean's 8. Uh, Novocaine, extremely loud and incredibly close. Uh, Jack Reacher, which Roz is in. Carol, of course, my baby. 
my favourite film of all time. The Monuments Men, Sweeney Todd, Viscera's House, Moulin Rouge, of course, The Two Towers, Lord of the Rings, uh, 28 Days, Henry VIII, Straight Heads, which is the most disturbing film I have ever seen. It's a Gillian film. Uh, Danny Dyer is in it, and uh, yeah, absolutely horrific. Wouldn't, wouldn't recommend. <laughs> the Heart of Me, Charlotte Grey, Speed, the first Great Expectations, which is the movie version, which is Helena, Thor Ragnarok, Toast, Lady Jane, Alpha the movie, Tia Spivet, which is so soft. What have we got up here? We have the DVD of Fellowship of the Ring and Enid, so uh, they've got to go back in their cases at some point. Then A Private War and Pride and Prejudice, which are both Ros movies, uh, Elizabeth the Golden Age, The Blind Side, The House of Mirth, The Indiana Jones that Kate is in. Oh, there's the uh, two DVDs that need to go back, Enid and Fellowship of the Ring. And then we have my massive X-Files box set, which... It's my pride and joy. I love it. It's my beauty. I love Nina, which is the softest thing Helena has ever done. Return to Sender, which is equally as disturbing as Straight Heads. Truth. Big Fish, Series of Unfortunate Events, which, fun fact, back of Helena is in for about 10 seconds. <laughs> Mamma Mia, Blue Jasmine, Pushington, Alice in Wonderland, which used to be my favourite movie ever until I watched Carol. The X-Files I Want to Believe. My Gone Girl is a really skinny, weird DVD. Uh, then we have Continuum. Is Gillian, but if you've watched that movie, you'll know why watching it when I came out of hospital was not a great idea. Um, Turks and Caicos, The Net, The Spy Who Dumped Me, which is uh, Kate McKinnon, but Gillian is also in it and it is so good. What We Do on Our Holiday, A United Kingdom, Robot of Lords, which is the worst movie I've ever watched. The Things I Do for Gillian Anderson. <laughs> Return of the King, Miss Peregrine, which is the weirdest movie adaption just about ever, but it's Eva Green and Tim Burton, so what can you do? The Life Aquatic with Steven Zizou, Cinderella, the version that Kate and Helena is in, which is amazing. Talented Mr. Ripley, Salting the Battlefield. Then I have my Robbie Williams One Night at the Palladium DVD, which Helena is actually in because she was in the audience. Murder by Numbers, The Missing, The Gift, The Lone Ranger, Premonition, which I've never actually watched because I think it'll freak me out too much. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which is the Tim Burton version because Helena's in it. Hope Floats, Conversations with Other Women is so good if you haven't seen it. My big Abfab box set. Go with my big French and Saunders box set. Have While You Were Sleeping, which is a Sandy movie. Burton and Taylor. Helena plays Elizabeth Taylor and it is incredible. Alice Through the Looking Glass, probably one of the worst sequels of all time. Dark Shadows, Oscar and Lucinda, House with a Clock in Its Walls, Bleak House, which another one that Gillian was in. And then this is The Great Expectations that was the TV adaption that Gilly was Miss Havisham. Great Expectations is my favourite classic. And now Helena and Gillian have both played Miss Havisham, so amazing. I have the first two series of The Fall. I still need the third series, but I got them both secondhand, so <laughs> I'm waiting for the third one to be secondhand and cheap. I have the three Hobbit movies, three of the Hunger Games movies. I don't know where the first one is, but you know, we move. Speed 2, The Man Who Cried, in which Kate does about the worst Russian accent I've ever heard. Oh, the Curious Case of Benjamin Button, which everyone should know. Les Miserables, King's Speech, and The World's End, which is a Ross movie. Be My Harry Potters, Johnny English Reborn, which which has Rosamund and Gillian in, and it is the worst movie, but I watch it all the time because it's got both of them in it. Two more DVDs that should be in, oh, there it is. Johnny English Reborn and, uh, I don't know what this is. Oh, Practical Magic. Oh, Madam Secretary season one. I don't have the rest of them, but it's my favorite TV show, so I probably should. I have Hamlet, A Time to Kill, and The Good German. I'm literally stood on my chair to get this because uh, this pile is extremely high. I am not that tall. We start at the top is Coffee and Cigarettes, which is, there is like short little films that Kate does one of. Bandits, which is so funny, and so is The Heat, which is the Sandy Practical Magic, which is one of my favourite films ever. The vibes are immaculate. I have The Special Relationship, which is a movie about Tony Blair and Bill Clinton. I have The Fantastic, the first Fantastic Beasts movie, Robin Hood, which Kate is in, Gravity, Sandra, The Shipping News, Glass is Sarah Apple, The Aviator, which Kate won her first Oscar for, so even though she's only in it until about halfway through, she did win her first Oscar, so you know, we love. The Wings of the Dove, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Corpse Bride, Diana the day which Roz is in. It's the only James Bond movie I've ever watched, I know. Notes on a Scandal, Victoria Gurin, Babel and Hannah, which is the original movie which Kate is in. And then here I have my DVD player. First shelf is this one. This is mostly books with black spines. First book is obviously missing. I have Twilight at Uni, but then I have the rest of the series. So I have New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn and Midnight Sun. Then I also have The Host, which is the other book that Stephanie Meyer wrote. I have the first two books in the Fifth Wave series. So The Fifth Wave and The Infinite Sea, as well as fourth, I think, book 
in the Darkest Minds, which is the Darkest Legacy. Then I have my Gillian Flynn book, so I have Sharp Object, Dark Places, The Grown Up, which is literally a tiny little book. And then I have Gone Girl, which is one of my favourite books. And I literally just reread it the other day. So love that for me. The Girl on the Train, because it kind of goes with these two. Panic by Lauren Oliver. Bird Box. This is the cover with Sandy on it. If I can get a movie cover with one of my MILFs on, I'm gonna get it. Afterwards by Scott Westfeld, which is the most underrated books, I think, on all bookish platforms. I have The Happiest Girl in the World, which is about gymnastics. I have a lot of gymnastics books. I love watching gymnastics and tweeting about gymnastics. I don't do it because I'm disabled, but you know. I have Empire of the Vampire, which is huge by Jay Kristoff. Um, usually in here and like up here, I have a few dark academia books. I think The Secret History, books like that. I then have another thriller, Ruthless Women by Melanie Blake. And then the two first books, The Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor. Then I have Romanov, which has the prettiest cover. Okay, so this is a really bad angle. I apologise, but we got to work with what we've got. This shelf is sort of like darker greys and silvers and then brown on this side. The first book we have is probably the ugliest book in my whole collection. It is the original Shatter Me hardcover, which I own because it was really cheap on Amazon when I first wanted to buy this series, which was when it was like on OG booktube. Yeah, it's gross. I absolutely hate it. I really need to buy the new paperback, but I have the Beholder and The Boundless, both by Anna Bright. The Beholder, I think, is a signed fairy loot edition. So I buy a lot of my books secondhand. I use Abe Books, World of Books, but websites like that, or like the secondhand part of Amazon. And sometimes when they come, they're like old fairy loot editions or they're signed. And it is the most exciting thing when you open the box and it's like that. I then have Harry the Night, which is the second book by Tamsin Muir. The Infinity Courts, which I've read, which put me in an existential crisis. Oh my God. I have Fairest by Marissa Meyer, which is like the novella for the Lunar Chronicles, Prodigy by Marie Lu, and then I have two Maradai books, so The Unbecoming and The Evolution of Maradai. I don't even know which way around there are. I know that one's the first one. I think that's the second one. I have A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth, which has the prettiest cover. It's stunning. It's also gay as far as I know, so that's fun. Then up here is Gods and Monsters by Shelby Maharin. Uh, Star Sight, which is the second book in Brandon Sanderson Skyward series. Then I have This Time Will Be Different, which again came as a really cute little like fairy loot or Illumicrate. I don't know which one it was, but it's got a signed book plate and yellow sprayed edges, which is so cute. Then I have Bone Cries Moon by Catherine Purdy. I have the first book by Tanzan Muir, which is Giddy in the Night. It was marketed as like lesbian necromancers, so I of course own that. I haven't read it yet, but I'm gonna because it sounds amazing. I have the third book by Holly Jackson, which is As Good As Dead. Then up here, down at the bottom where I'm not sure you can see, I have have An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. Second book in the System Divine series, which is Between Burning Worlds. I have the first and third book in the Darkest Minds trilogy by Alexandra Brecken. Hollow City is part of the Miss Peregrine series. A Great and Terrible Beauty by Liver Bray. An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. So then I have Obsidio by J. Christoph and Amy Kaufman, which is the third book in the Illuminae Files. Legend and Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. This is one of my favourite books of all time. The first three books in this series are hands down some of the best books ever. The last three, you could probably live without them. Uh, there's the third one there, A Library of Souls, which is the first one I own in hardback. Into the Darling Deep by Myra Grant, a pseudonym that Shauna McGuire, who writes the Wayward Children series uses. This shelf is like my adult high fantasy shelf. I also have this cute little mug that I got for my 18th birthday, which has a little doggy on it. That just lives up there. And then I have the whole of the Wheel of Time, except the first book, which again, is at uni. I also have the Game of Thrones series, Series, as well as this cute little map that came with the box set of Westeros. So that's cute. There are 14 books in the Wheel of Time series as well as the prequel. They're huge and I cannot wait to read them and I refuse to watch the series which has Ross Pike in it until I read them which is obviously gonna be a really long time but you know we move we move. This shelf is really simple. I mean it kind of fits the colour scheme like it goes from brown but I do like having just the shelves of pure big series as well because I'm not a heathen. So this shelf is basically biographies and books that I didn't know where to put. A little gnome up here covering the Robert Galbraith book. This is one of my favourite shelves because it has all my favourite people on it. If they've written a book or if the book has been written about them, I love adding it to this shelf. So I have the Annie Lennox biography. I have Miranda Hart's autobiography, which if you grew up in the UK, Miranda Hart is like an icon. Then I have the book that Gillian Anderson wrote, which is like a self-help, like self-confidence book. And it has a really pretty picture of her on it. So you know, what what's not to love? Then I have Burton on Burton, which is is a book about Tim Burton. Obviously I have Spectacles by Sue Perkins which is signed because I met her at Cheltenham Literature Festival and uh, she's amazing. I have Reveal by Robbie Williams which is his biography. 
which I've not actually read yet, but we won't talk about that. Judy Murray autobiography, which is also signed because I also met her at Cheltenham Literature Festival, which is like the best thing about living in the Southwest is we have the Cheltenham Literature Festival and we always have really cool people there. I have Amanda's autobiography, Jennifer Saunders, which I also saw her at Cheltenham Literature Festival, but she didn't sign books. Then I have Karen Brady's autobiography, and this is probably one of the most special books I own because she sent this to me and she signed it and she sent me a little letter, which is literally one of my most prized possessions. A lot of the time I have this little quote here as my lock screen because I find it really motivational. Yeah, that is probably one of the coolest things that ever happened to me. She followed me on Twitter and was like, I'm gonna send you a copy of my book. And I was like, um, okay. <laughs> then I have a copy of one of David Coulthard's books. Um, if you don't know, he's one of my emotional support white men. He commentates for Formula One. He's an ex-Formula One driver and his voice is really soothing to me. So that's why I have him. The two science fiction books that you, well, it's a trilogy, I think, but I have the first two and I haven't found Found the third one yet in hardback. Second hat, I'll wait to find that. The President is Missing by Bill Clinton, which I started reading at the start of the pandemic and then it creeped me out too much because it was like everything was so strange in the world so I stopped reading it but I really should pick that back up again. And then I have my hardcover of The Night Circus which has really pretty black sprayed edges and a little ribbon bookmark so that's cute. And then on top I just have Andy Murray's biography which was released just after he won Wimbledon I think for the first time. Also the David Walsh book about Lance Armstrong because I am obsessed with the doping scandal and doping in sport and I've watched a lot of documentaries so I thought I might as well buy one of the books and uh, David Walsh was like one of the lead proponents of bringing that scandal to light so that's a fun little book. So the shelf is absolutely packed, like it's absolutely jam-packed. So I have a Ruthless Heroines candle. I absolutely adore bookish candles. If my whole shelf could be covered in like bookish candles with like genres and characters and books, I just, I love them so much. These ones are Ruthless Heroines ones. The packaging is so beautiful. I get them off Etsy and they're really reasonable. And uh, this one is a Dark Academia one and it smells of espresso martini. It's incredible and I love burning them while I'm in the bath and reading and um, yeah, amazing. Moving on to the books. I first book I have in this pile is like one of my favourites. It's Malice by Heather Walter. The sequel is coming out so soon. I'm so excited because this is like a sapphic retelling of Sleeping Beauty and it is as good as it sounds. I urge you to go and read this. And then the rest of the pile I have Brightly Burning by Alexa Don, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrick, Reap of Souls which is a sequel to Kingdom of Souls. I have The Beautiful and the Damned by Renée Adier, These Violet Delights by Chloe Gong which again I don't have the sequel of which is so frustrating because when I have the money I will buy it and I will love it. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Everyone loves the Grisha trilogy and Six of Queros by Lee Bardugo. This is my favourite Lee Bardugo book. It's I annotated it. There's a lot of purple and there's a lot of pink which are quotes I love and bits that are like sweet and I love. I need the sequel to this book so badly and it has the coolest naked hardcover. Look at it. It's got like snake print on the spine. It's so cool. Then I have my Tolkien book. So I have the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Silmarillion. The Lord of the Rings is my favourite fantasy series ever though. I love these books. I can't wait to reread them and annotate them. I have books two and three in the Witchland series, so by Susan Dennard, which is Windwitch and Bloodwitch. I have 1Q84, which is the Fool trilogy by Haruki Murakami. And this book is huge. It's so fat and I am so excited because one thing you will see by my bookshelf is I adore big books, like huge fat books are just my favourite things. I'm a whore for a big book, what can I say? This is Notes on a Scandal by Zoe Heller. It is uh, the book that, as you can see, a Kate movie is based on. Then I have In the Ravenous Dark, Plain Bad Heroines, which is the American hardcover copy. Absolutely stunning. It has illustrations in it. I'm pretty sure it's like Dark Academia and it's gothic. I think I'm gonna take it back to uni with me and hopefully read it this semester. I have The Maidens, Kingdom of the Wicked, and A Ballad of Songbird and Snakes, which is like the prequel to The Hunger Games. It's very different to The Hunger Games, like the writing style is completely different. It was really interesting to read about like the philosophy behind it and stuff. And Kingdom of the Curse by Kerry Maniscalco. And then on top I have, have The Northern Lights trilogy by Philip Pullman. These are my dad's books, so I love having these on my shelf. And The Atlas Six, which is the original like self-published version of it. The Dark Academia book that I'm book talk and I'm very excited for. This is one of my favourite shelves on my whole bookshelf. I just think it looks so good. I don't know, there's something about this that here that just... <laughs> I love it. I'll start with the only Taylor Jenkins Reid book I haven't actually read yet and that's maybe in another life. I feel like I'm saving this at this point like because I just I know once I've read it I won't have any more new ones to read until she publishes a new one so I'm like 
saving it. Then I have Ruin Rising by Lee Bardugo. So I annotated these books, but I, they weren't my favourite. I prefer the Grisha trilogy to the Six of Crows duology, and I think that's what's going to get me killed on BookTok, to be honest. <laughs> then I have a big stack of hardcovers, as well as Anxious People by Frederick Backman, which we all know I love. My sister's really doing this at the moment, actually. Um, I have Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood, which I literally just a couple of days ago, I read it all in one day. I made a little TikTok of it. It was great. I have Amelie Wen Zhao's two books, so I have Blood Air and Red Tigress. The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. Where Dreams Descend, which I read while I was at uni for one of my 24 hour readathons, and it was so good. It was like the greatest showman vibes, like circus. It was amazing. I have Vox and The Bone Season. Not My Problem, which is, I'm pretty sure it's sapphic. I did a whole book haul of like just sapphic books a while ago, so uh, I bought a lot. <laughs> Blood and Honey, which is the sequel to Serpent and Dove. And then up here, I have The Elite by Kira Cass, which is, I think, the second book in the selection series. And Scythe. Scythe is easily the best book in the Scythe trilogy. And then underneath I have Wicked Saints by Ernie A. Duncan with The Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Peckerton. I was convinced for the longest time that Greer Hendricks was the same person as Grady Hendricks and uh, turns out that's not anywhere near the truth. I was just really confused. Then I have Arch Enemies which is, these books are really shiny for no reason but that's part of the Renegades series by Marissa Meyer. Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith. Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I absolutely adore this trilogy. It's like the Hunger Games in space but like space opera. I have another Murakami, so I have Norwegian Wood, The Power, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, and then this is Love Nina by Nina Stibby. I've never heard anyone talk about Nina Stibby on um, BookTok or BookTube or anywhere, but uh, she's one of my favourite authors. Her books are so funny and so heartfelt. This one is like a memoir of her time when she was a nanny in London. As you can see, there was a TV programme made, which I have the DVD of up there, that Helena played the mum that she nannied for. You need to read this book. I love it. I love Nina Stibby. I just Oh, I love this. Then I have the first and the third book in V.E. Schwab's Darker Shade of Magic series, so Darker Shade of Magic and A Country of Light. I've read the first two books, but not this one yet. I'm reading them on audiobook and it's taking me a while. <laughs> then I- oh, I have another little candle here. This one is probably my favourite bookish candle on my whole bookshelf. It's the Bella Swan one and it just smells so fresh. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell and American Gods, which again, two massive books. We know how I feel about big books. And then I have Girls of Fate and Fury by Natasha Nyang, which is the third book in that series. And I refuse to read the second book until I have this because everyone told me the second book ended on a massive cliffhanger. So now I have this, it's finally been published. I feel like I can read the second book now. So that's exciting. This is another shelf that's absolutely packed to the brim. Like I cannot fit anything else on this shop if I tried and believe me I have tried. I have a little Priory of the Orange Tree candle. This is from Midnight Flame. Look at the glitter. See these are so cool. It smells like sweets. <laughs> I just, I adore these candles. Then I have orange books. So I have She Who Became the Sun, which I know Holly from Caffeinated Reader is her favourite book. Finally got it in a Waterstone sale and I'm very excited to finally read it. It's part of the sapphic trifecta. Screen Queens. I have Mockingjay because The Hunger Games is my favourite series. Illuminae, Crazy Rich Asians. The Falling in Love montage, which is also a sapphic. Landline by Rainbow Rowell, which is like the first adult book I ever bought, like read because I didn't realise it was an adult book. But I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. And then Lola and the Boy Next Door, King of Scars, which I haven't read yet. It's the only thing that like books in the Grisha verse that I haven't read. Shadow and Bone. And this is Rodham by Curtis Sittenfeld. So it's, it's kind of like a dystopian alternate history book about what would have happened if Hillary had never married Bill. So of course I had to have that. My mum bought it for me for Easter because in our family we don't get Easter eggs, we get a book every Easter. So that was my book last Easter. And then these three books are literally the most beautiful books I own. Cersei by Madeline Miller, it's stunning. And then Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman, which is one of the prequels to Practical Magic. The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant, which as far as I've learned is like a magical retelling of Les Miserables. You literally can't get any better than that. I'm so excited to read all of these and they are so pretty. I just love books with like gold or metallic. Then I have Roundbreaker, Ironheart, which is the sequel to Cry's Wall, which I left at uni because I'm amazing. Star Daughter is another absolutely stunning cover and this book is amazing. Golden Sun, as I said, from Pierce Brown, which is part of the Red Rising trilogy. And then I have one of my Carol copies, so I have two copies of this book because it's my favourite. Oh, it's also published under the price of salt and it's by Patricia Highsmith. You just have to read it. You have to read it. It's so good. It's like the original Suffolk age gap. And obviously it's got Kate and Rooney on the cover. Then 
Then up top I have Priory, which is huge, and funnily enough, I have one of the smallest books I own, Hold Still, by Nina Nicole, who is also one of my favourite authors. Then in this massive pile, which is impossible to get anything out of, I have Head Over Heels by Hannah Orenstein, which is another gymnastic book. It's a romance. I have Anyway the Wind Blows, which my mum bought me. The Unbroken, which is another one of the sapphic fantasy trifecta. <laughs> this is Dark Age by Pierce Brown. This is like the follow-on series to the Red Rising trilogy, which I haven't read yet because I don't want to ruin the first one, but also just because I haven't got around to it. The Girls by Emma Klein, Eleanor on Park, which is hugely problematic, but I did own it before I knew that. I was like 11. Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Permanent Record, which has the coolest dust jacket. It's like a plastic dust jacket, but I can't get it out because it's absolutely jammed in. And Frankly In Love, which has like a dark blue sprayed edges. And then at the end, I just have One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So this shelf is obviously Harry Potter shelf, but I have the first book in the illustrated edition. I kind of want more, but I'm gonna have to find them secondhand, and I feel like that's gonna be difficult, but you know. These are the adult Bloomsbury hardcover editions, so they have obviously really colourful spines and then really pretty black and white like illust illustrated covers, as well as end papers. Then I have my original, so these full paperback came in a box set and then my original hardcovers. These were my parents, now they're mine because I've stolen them. But obviously these are very well loved and they've been read by probably four different people in this family. I also have my little Hermione candle. Then I have a little Bellatrix pop figure because Bellatrix is my favourite character. Obviously she's played by Helena, which helps. And a little Hedwig. Then I have my Hermione wand. This is from the Noble Collection. I've had this for years and it's just so cool to me. I don't. I have the three Hogwarts Library books in the pretty box set. Everything's very dusty because I haven't been near this shelf in so long because my chair is normally pushed up against it so those three which are Quidditch for the Ages, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and Tales of Beedle the Bard and I also have the original comic relief copy of Tales of Beedle the Bard as well as a re-release of Quidditch through the Ages. That's a little Harry minifigure, that's cute. You can go up there. Then I have the Fantastic Beasts screenplay, Cursed Child, which is cursed, we know, but I still love it. Like, I still read it in like three hours. It was, yeah. Then I have the film wizardry book, which, which came with loads of cool, like, add ins, and it came with like a Marauder's map and a Hogwarts, like, letter. So that book was really cute. And then I have the massive page to screen book, which, like, documents the whole process of turning the books into the movies. Here I have. Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, which, like I said, these, I prefer the Grisha trilogy to these. I did not get the hype. Like, they were good books, but they just weren't as good as I thought they were going to be. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Wise Man's Fear, which is the sequel to The Name of the Wind, The Hunger Games, Winter, which is the last book in the Lunar Chronicles, which is huge, and I love that. Watch Against the Night by Sabbath to Hear, Never Night in God's Grave by J. Kristoff, and I have these two in paperback. And that stresses me out because the last one I have in hardcover, but anyway. Children of Blood and Bone by Tony Adeyemi. This was so big on booktube back in the day and I feel like we need to blow it up on booktok. The Ravens, which is like a sorority college sort of light academia story with witches. Incredible. So good. Uh, Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. This is like a space opera. I've read about half of it and it was incredible. And I need to pick it back up again. <laughs> the Last Star by Rick Yancey, which is the final book in the Fifth Wave series. I have two more candles, so I have Gandalf's Fireworks, which you might have guessed. I'm obsessed with Lord of the Rings, so Twilight one. Bella and Edward on top. This is from Enchanted Realm and oh my god it smells like Christmas. It smells like Christmas. <laughs> now I have another big stack of books. This one is so cool. I got this in the Waterstones half price book sale for literally £3 and it's a signed copy. That's pretty cool. And I have Codename Verity which I've talked about before. I love it. Children of Virtue and Vengeance which is the sequel to Children of Blood and Bone. Uh, Escape Graces which is gay witches. I'm so excited for that. Dark Tide, which is also gay witches. It was amazing. Uh, Horrid by Katrina Leno. And My Sister the Serial Killer. Which then The Sky Without Stars, which is the first book in the System Divine trilogy, which I haven't built the third one of. But I'm pretty sure Liv from Olivia Riza Latte described it as Les Miserables in space. So um, incredible. And then The Starless Sea, which has one of the prettiest covers of all time. I mean, even the end papers. Like, it, I feel like it really fits with Erin Morgan's writing. Her writing deserves a book that pretty. So this is the Sarah J Mass shelf. I know, I know, I shouldn't have this, I shouldn't have this many Sarah J Mass books, but I do. I'm sorry. These are my big hefty hardcovers. These are all annotated, um, which I annotated them a lot because I do love these books. They're not the best books I've ever read, but they're the first like major epic fantasy I've ever read. 
I have a special place in my heart for that, except this book, Tower of Dawn. I hate it. It's ableist and it's crap and I hate kale. And then uh, these are my paperbacks of The Throne of Glass. So these are the books I read first and then I reread them in hardcover. I have more candles, so I have a Night Court one from Ruthless Heroines, which has the Night Court on top. It's so pretty. And then To the Stars Who Listen, which is a bigger candle from Enchanted Realm and is absolutely stunning. I then have The Assassin's Blade. I have way back beneath, behind here. I have my paperback copy of Tower of Dawn, which I hate. And then I have my Akatar series, so I have it in the original paperback. This book is really funny because it's you can see halfway through I got my tabs and I started annotating. So there's nothing there to begin with and then completely annotated towards the end. So that's cute. I love that. And A Court of Silver Flames, I still haven't read. I don't really know when I'm going to get to it. But I'm sure I will at some point because I am nothing if not trash. And A Court of Frost and Starlight was awful. Do not read it. Not worth it. A very blue shelf here. Another candle by Ruthless Heroines. This is I Will Sing a Requiem from Dear Evan Hansen and it's got the cast on top. And usually in here I have my big copy of Strange the Dreamer, the hardcover, which is my favourite book I own. It was so hard to find and it is so beautiful, but it is at uni, so at some point you will see that when I am at uni. So instead I have The Great God in here now. It was like a shortlisted book for a YA book prize that I got sent. Um, then I have The Wolf Between Us, which is another one of the thrillers. The Air Affair by Heather Cox, Jessica Morgan. This is the sequel the royal we which i have somewhere else that you'll probably see later <laughs> but i am a, such a sucker for royal romances the barracuda which i read when i really shouldn't have it was so not appropriate for me to read when i was 12 years old but i absolutely love it it's so underrated um cinderella is dead which is a sapphic retelling her book is the daughter of smoke and bone trilogy unravel me by tahira mafi girls of july and vicious spirits by Cacho. a peg don't ask. And I have a pile of bookmarks, so I cross-stitched a couple of them. This is a Blackwell's one. I have so many book depository ones. I cross-stitched. This one was a Hunger Games one. This was one I cross-stitched when I was like nine. Uh, yeah, my bookshelf basically becomes storage most of the time, so... They live there. Morning Star, which is the original like end to that trilogy. Catching Fire, my favourite book in the Hunger Games series. And Renegades and Supernova by Marissa Meyer. They both die at the end, which I know is orange, but like the spine is blue, so it counts. <laughs> Wayward Sun, Gemina, all the bright places, Her Royal Highness, which is a sapphic royal romance. You literally cannot get anything that i would love more <laughs> it was so good then i have i think i love you party and issues go to fake dating the hold that the fake dating trope ho has over sapphic romances my god but it's so good this is watch over me by nina lacour this is like a kind of sequel companion novel to we are okay which is one of my favorite books of all time and i haven't read it yet because i'm a bit scared to but i know when i do i'll probably love it then I have Room by Anna Donahue, which is like a modern classic. I've watched the movie, so I know that like, reading the book is not going to be as impactful, but I'm still really excited to. Pandemonium by o Lauren Oliver and Blessed Monsters. And then underneath all these remote controls <laughs> is Anna Kay by Jenny Lee, which is like a modern rich people drama retelling of Anna Karenina. And it is so good. It made me want to read Anna Karenina. But I don't have a copy I can like physically read yet so we're just gonna have to hold on that one but this is a green shelf this shelf is really frustrating because it's one of the skinnier ones and I feel like I can't fit enough on here but I have the Wicked King and the Midnight Lie the Midnight Lie has pretty red sprayed edges so then obviously at the bottom here I have we put the gates by Sabata here and piled on top of there I have the Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin which I haven't read yet but my mum really loved. I have Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart, which is told backwards, and I it took me, honestly, the whole book to work that out, which was not one of my finer moments. Then I have The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, Ignite Me, which I have in the floppy paperback, which is, like, my favourite book form ever. If I could have all the books in this form, I would, but they publish them differently in the UK, which is sad. Then I have Radio Silence by Alice Oseman, which is a really beautiful book if you haven't read that, especially if you grew up in the school system in the UK. It really resonates. P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Hahn. And then I have two copies of Where'd You Go Bernadette. So this one is the Kate one. This has Kate's face on it. So of course I have to have that. And it was really cheap secondhand as well, which was amazing. And then this is my original copy, which I have annotated. Which obviously has loads of tabs in it and all my writing. 
Then I have Anna K Away, which is the sequel to Anna K um, by Jenny Lee, which I'm so excited to read. The other end of Anna K ruined me, so I don't know when I'm gonna get to it. Finding Audrey by Sophie Kinsella, which I read so long ago, but it's about a girl with agoraphobia and anxiety, so I remember I read it in a night and it was amazing. I cannot wait to reread this and hopefully annotate it. Then we have this big pile of books, so I have the last two books in the Scythe series, which this series gets worse throughout it, but it's still good. Like me saying the first book is the best doesn't mean that these are bad. They're just not as good as the first book. But I did. Then The Retribution of Mara Dyer. I think, is this the third one? The I Learn the Happily Ever After. Fangirl, of course, the classic Rainbow Rowell. Rich People Problems, which is Kevin Kwan, part of the Crazy Rich Asian series. And The Next Together, which I've had on my shelf for so long and I haven't read. So I feel like I really need to read that or I'm going to end up unhauling it. And then Siege and Storm, which is also annotated, but I'm not going to try and get out because it's absolutely jammed in there. Then I have Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I have The Last Graduate, which is the sequel to A Deadly Education. Then I have The Book of Life by Deborah Harkness. So this is the third book in the Discovery of Witches All Souls series. As I said, these massive floppy paperbacks are my favourite like form of book, but I made a mistake when I was buying these books because I have the first two in like tiny mass market paperbacks. And then this one is huge, so um, that's fun. <laughs> Then I have The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, which is like really classic adult fantasy, which I don't think the trilogy has been finished yet and everyone's like thinks it's never going to be finished, so I don't know when I'm going to get to this, but I know everyone loves it, so I am excited to. I have this stack here, which is literally like every hype book imaginable, but we move. Cinder by Marissa Meyer. All Our Hidden Gifts, which was another one that was in the shortlist for a YA book competition thing. Visible Life of Addie LaRue, which is so pretty and has literally the most stunning naked hardcover. I mean, this is one of my favourites. Rebel book by Marie Lu, which I really need to get to because I loved the last book of the Legend series, so a continuation is kind of amazing. But also, <laughs> Marie Lu was sort of involved in that NFT scandal, so I'm like... <laughs> Do I really want to read it? But I got it second hand, so... Then I have Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. She wrote the Caraval series. Then I have Ace of Spades and Girls of Storm and Shadow. I have Written the Stars, which is literally jammed in as far as you can get. But this is a sapphic romance and it is so cute. I have Mask of Mirrors, which is another one of my big massive paperbacks, which is really cool. Uh, these Broken Stars, which is like a booktube classic. I remember Catty Tastic having these books and they really do have pretty pretty covers so at some point I will get to those. Never Fade, Deadly Education, I have The First Truth Witch book and Rebel Angels by Liver Bray and then Scarlet and Cress by Marissa Meyer and then these are all underneath that is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. The UK hardcover was so difficult to find and I finally found it and it is so worth it. Then I have Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I really didn't like this and I feel like I'm like the only person that I found it so infra dumpy which I was really sad about. Then The Stars We Steal, This Cover Won't Break which is by Isabel Sterling which is part another gay witch book if you couldn't tell gay witch is my favourite genre ever. It's so good. Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. Also Gay Witches. Amazing. Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Matson. Bone Cries Dawn, which is the sequel to Bone Cries Moon. American Royals, which has pink suede edges. As I've said, I love royal romances and I love rich people drama. And uh, that's all of the above. And then I just have a little thriller on the end, You Are Not Alone, which is another Greta Hendrix and Sarah Peckinham book. Okay, so I know these are the shelves. I know a lot of people have been waiting for. I am so excited to share these shelves because these are my Penguin English Library books. So as you can see, I own a lot of them. They have the orange spines and they have the art on the front by Coralie Beckford Smith. And I am absolutely in love with them. Um, there are some gaps because I have a pile of them at uni as well. Well, but I've been collecting these books probably since a couple of years ago and uh, anywhere I can find them I literally I will buy them. There's a lot on book depository, a lot on Abe books, anywhere second hand because a lot of them are quite hard to find now because they're out of print so if anyone ever finds a Jude the Obscure or a Bleak House or a Pickwick Papers just hit me up because I want them so bad but <laughs> they're so hard to find. So I'll start with at the top I have just some other classics. I have Gone with the Wind I have a copy of Bleak House, but it's the copy Gillian on it, of course, because why wouldn't I? Then I have another copy of Carol, and this is the one that I've annotated. 
as well as the Count of Monte Cristo. And this is my other favourite set of Penguin classics. So my next set to conquer will be these black ones. I love them as well, but obviously these are my favourites. I have Lolita and the film time version of Les Mis, which has Cosette on the front and it's just so pretty and so heavy as well. This is like a brick, like you could knock someone out with this. Then I have two candles, which Ezzy got me for Christmas, which are so cute. And they are Jane Austen candles. So this one says, there is no charm equal to tenderness of the heart. And this one is, if I loved you more, I might be able to talk about it. So they fit very nicely on my little classic shelves. Okay, I think the best way to do this is just to say what I've got and then pull out my favourites because there are so many. Start at this end, I have 1984 by George Orwell. I have At the Mountains of Madness by Lovecraft. The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Northanger Abbey, which I didn't even realise I had until a couple of days ago because I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. Uh, if you couldn't tell, these are sort of in a sort of rainbow, but like sort of not. I have Evelina by Bernie. Silas Marner by George Eliot as well as Middlemarch and then this is literally my favourite in the whole collection it's the complete works of Jane Austen and it's like 900 pages long and it's so pretty it's pink I love it it's my favourite one The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell Dubliners by James Joyce Sense and Sensibility I could have sworn I took that one with me so I don't know which one I took I've definitely got a Jane Austen at uni and I don't know which one that's cute I have The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins and then in here is usually Great Expectations which is at uni and my favourite classic and Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad The Awakening Ghost Stories by M.R. James which is always funny because it uh, looks like Mr. James who was my history teacher love you Mr. James miss you <laughs> To On a Tower by Hardy uh, Daisy Miller and The Turn of the Screw Dracula Picture of Dorian Gray Alice's Adventures in Wonderland which is one of my favourite books and has the flamingo on the front and it's so pretty. Bride's Head Revisited, Mansfield Park, Sanditon. So this is my other favourite classic, which is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. And this is the first Penguin English Library book I ever bought. It was the only one I had for the longest time and then I became obsessed. So this one is pride of place because it was the one that started it all. Then I have Murdered in the Rue Morgue and Other Tales by Edgar Allan Poe. Let's move the candle. Tom Jones by Henry Fielding which you can see is an ex-library book so a lot of them have got like library books of them and then obviously the spine is all crushed but it's so cute because then you take the jacket off so it still has like the sticker on the bottom which I just think gives it so much character. I love it. Like how many people loved that book as well. And then I have the smallest book in the collection, A Christmas Carol, which I started reading at Christmas. You can see I started annotating it and I never finished. But I love the way I annotate these books and I cannot wait until they're all, all tabbed up and highlighted and beautiful. Scarlet Pimpernel, Villette, which I think is one of the harder ones to find. And again, you can tell like the difference in the cover that this was a library book. I have Mary Barton by Gaskell, The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot, and then Moby Dick by Herman Melville, which I'm so excited to read. It has the whales on the front and also because it's Scully's favourite book in X-Files and obviously she calls her dog Queequeg and I'm very excited to finally understand why she loves it <laughs> and to channel my inner Scully always. And then because one shelf clearly isn't enough, I have a whole second shelf of Penguin English Library book. I also have some leftover chocolate so uh, we'll move that, that's from Christmas. My headphones, we'll move that as well. Remember when I said my bookshelves were just storage? Uh, this is a little Glossier palette, that belongs in my wardrobe. On this shelf I have two cloth band classics, so I have a puffy cloth band classic which is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett and then I also have one of the Penguin cloth band classics. I have War and Peace. One day I will collect all of these classics as well but I cannot justify collecting the Penguin English Library books and the cloth band classic. The Penguin English Library books are like a, a cheaper way of collect- well I say cheaper some of them are really expensive because they're hard to find but they are cheaper than overall than the hardcover cloth band classics but these are really pretty and one day I will have lots of them. <laughs> Okay, so this side where you can't really see, we've gone obviously into the green uh, rainbow, is not as good as the rainbow on the other shelf, so you're going to have to forgive me and work with me on that. But I have Robinson Crusoe, I have Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, which I'm really excited to read because it, it was like the first book I ever read. And I got a Kindle for the first time because it was one of the public domain like free ones, so I'm really excited to reread this. Uh, I have Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, Tess of the Durbervilles, which I'm trying to relive 
live my English lit dreams because I never took English lit the A level that I wish I had and this is one of the books they did in my school so I feel like by reading that I'm reclaiming that part of me. I have A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, Emma by Jane Austen, Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell, uh, Tender as the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald, Hard Times by Charles Dickens. The Dickens books are the I find are the hardest to find because they a lot of them were printed in like the first printing of them so they're out of print now and uh, I don't have many Dickens books. I have a handful of dust, this is Peter Pan, Lady Audley's Secret, I have Animal Farm which has one of the creepier it, uh, front pages. I don't know why, what it is about that haul but it kind of creeps me out. So. David Copperfield and um, this is The Great Gatsby which is all beaten up because I read and annotated it. I don't know if you can see because the pages were kind of separated by the tab but this one is all pretty and highlighted and I just know that they're gonna look so cool when they're all like that. Great Gatsby made me realise I absolutely adore F. Scott Fitzgerald's writing so that's fun. I have To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf, Barchester Towers by Trollope, Portrait of a Lady, and the Mayor of Casterbridge, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley which has got the heart on it and I think is one of the prettiest books. I don't know the colour scheme is just so pretty I love it. Ethan Frome by Edith Wharton, Howard's End by Ian Forster which again is so pretty I mean look at the umbrellas. Ian Forster is one of my favourite authors obviously Helena is in a lot of the Merchant Ivory films based on Ian, the Ian Forster books but I also absolutely adore A Room With A View and it's currently at university with me so I can reread it and annotate it I have The Tenant of Wildfell Hall and Bronte, Oliver Toyce, which was so hard to find, <laughs> Thackeray, which again you can see is like an old library book. This is Mrs Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. This is Shirley, which you can see how I had to look everywhere for this book at a reasonable price. And uh, you can see how old and loved it is by the fact that the pages are all tanned and the cover's all tanned. But I have Far From the Manning Crowd by Hardy, Where the Angels Fear to Tread by Ian Forster, and Pride and Prejudice, which again is one of my favourite. Not because I love Mr. Darcy, but because I love Elizabeth, because of course. This one was, I annotated before I was brave enough to like highlight, so it's all underlined and posted, and I love how many tabs are in it. So those are the English library books, and then I have some of the modern classics here which honestly I just adore every set of Penguin Classics. If I could have every single collection of Penguin Classics ever published I absolutely would but we've got to be sensible here but I have The Curious Case of Benjamin Button and Six Other Stories by F. Scott Fitzgerald because as I said I love F. Scott Fitzgerald and I love Benjamin Button because Kate is in the film so what's not to love? I have A Streetcar Named Desire which is one of my favourite books ever. Blanche is one of my favourite fictional characters ever and also if you haven't seen Gillian Anderson play Blanche Dubois you're missing out because it is just genuinely incredible. I have Keep the Aspidistrifying by Orwell and A Clockwork Orange which is this really cool restored edition version of it which I absolutely adore. I think it looks so cool. Okay so here we have here we have a pink shelf which is a bit of a hodgepodge of how it's put together and uh, there's a lot of space still on this one so apparently every book I buy now has got to be pink. My Switch uh, dock which isn't even plugged in because my charger is still in my bag from when I came home from uni. But you know what? We move. So starting from the side again we have We Set the Dark on Fire which is a sapphic fantasy. Wicked Fox by Cat Cho, which books with Chloe read that I obviously needed to buy because I love books with Chloe. Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. No one talks about this one and I don't understand why because honestly I think this is as sad as Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo but I stand by the fact that anything Taylor Jenkins Reid writes is like my favourite book. Something to Talk About by Meryl Wilsner which everyone knows I love so much. It's sapphic and age gap and it's about a middle-aged actress and her PA and it is so good. It's like it was written for me. That I have The Furies by Kate Lowe which Ezzy actually bought for me. They were just like uh, I want to buy you a present and I was like okay and then they sent me that book so I was like thank you I love you. <laughs> I have The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. Delirium by Lauren Oliver which a different print to the other two I have which is frustrating because I hate when my series don't match. That was a weird series. It's like OG booktube again so I've read it because I never got to read it when I was like 13 but it was like every dystopian book that came out at that time. All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. Anna and the French Kiss which I'm so excited to reread. Now I'm older and want to go to Paris it's gonna be more <laughs> interesting to me. Um, it Ends With Us which is obviously a book talk classic. Royals which is the first, it's not really a series but it comes before Her Royal Highness which is sapphic and amazing. Um, I have this tiny little rainbow royal book which is Kindred Spirits which came out for World Book Day which if you're in the UK we have World Book Day every year and we get a little token so the book is a pound and you give your token in and you get from school and then you get a book and uh, Rainbow Rowell did one one year. I think it's about like waiting in line for the Star Wars movie. Anyway, 
2016, man, that was so long ago. I have a big hardcover of City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert, and then My Dark Vanessa, which is disturbing, but amazing. This Shattered World, Dangerous Alliance, which I think has Pride and Prejudice vibes. I have another candle, this is a Voyance Rune one. This is Malibu Rising, which is Taylor Jenkins Reid's latest book, and it's my Waterstone signed edition, which is one of my favourite books I own, because obviously she's my favourite author, and I have a signed book by her now, which is so cool. I have One Last Stop by Casey McQuinston, another Taylor Jenkins read after I do he drives me crazy which is sapphic and some girls do which I think is also sapphic you must not miss by the Katrina Leno cool for the summer and then the crown and the air are the two books they're like the companion series to the original selection series I haven't actually got to them yet I feel like if I ever reread the selection I'll get to them and if not at least they look quite nice in the purple bit of of my shelf this is my Cassandra Clare love this is my pride and joy I have this candle again this is from Ruthless Heroine it's the Tessa Grey candle Tessa is my favorite favourite fictional character ever. Then I have this big pile of books. So I have The Infernal Devices and the first two in the Last Hours series. And I also have Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy. This is like the UK Pate hardback edition. So it's like printed onto the hardcover. There's no dust jacket. I kind of hate it. And because I am now collecting them in hardcover, like I basically I bought all of these. So the Mortal Instruments and the Infernal Devices I found secondhand, which is quite hard to do in the UK because they weren't published in hardcover in the UK. So I found them all secondhand and I bought them all. And they're my prized possessions because I love them. But it means now that because the last hours in the UK have been printed in this one, I have to buy them through Book Depository so I can have them with the dust jackets and match the rest of my collection. So I also have the Bane Chronicles, which is in a paperback. So at some point I need to find a hardcover of that to go with the rest of my collection, as well as the Shadowhunters Codex. And then obviously I have the Six Mortal Instruments book. And these hardcovers are literally my favourite things ever because inside the dust jacket there's art printed on it so heavenly fire is obviously got everyone here all their spines have a different colored writing on them so they look really good when they're all naked together <laughs> so this one came in the worst condition he's a, she's a bit she's a bit beaten up i had and i had to put a sticker because someone had written their name in it and i was like this is mine now clockwork princess has the family tree on it which is really cool but my favorite is queen of air and darkness the most beautiful cover art it's Stunning. I also have the Eldest Curses books, so these are the ones about Alec and Magnus. I haven't actually read these two, these are the only two that I haven't read from Cassandra Clare yet. But then this book is like my pride of my whole collection because this is the original Waterstones edition of Lady Midnight. So I know that they do an edition, like a rune edition of every book that Cassandra Clare puts out now. But I know that not many people have this one. This is signed, which is super cool. And yeah, this is my favourite of all my Cassandra Clare books. I've seen these books go for so much money online honestly i haven't bought any of the rest of them because i just would have nowhere to put them but i do love that one that one. this shelf is really easy because it's literally just more fantasy usually it is all white but a lot of them are books are at university so while they are there i've just shoved the witcher books in here i don't have like the first two prequel like short story collections but i got sent these by galance to do like a 24 hour readathon which was cute so i have all of them here i do have elantris and warbreaker but they're at university at the moment and then I have the rest of my Brandon Sanderson collection. So I have the like short story collection. I have Mistborn and then Stormlight Archive. I don't have Rhythm of War yet because I, but because I have all of these in like the two parts. I really want to continue that as my way of collecting them. So I'm going to have to wait until Rhythm of War is in two parts. And then at the end, I just have more white books. So I have the Chaos Walking Trilogy by Patrick Ness, which if you grew up in the UK, was basically in every school library. Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I really Really enjoyed that was a really fun time plus nicole kidman so you know what's not to love and then right at the end i have heartless by marissa meyer which i haven't read yet but i should because i am obsessed with all things alice in wonderland and the queen of hearts and that is about the queen of hearts so what is not to love this is another shelf that is absolutely jam-packed like it's like a puzzle the way i put this together but i have a garth nix books which got sent to me i have rebecca in hardcover it's the 80th anniversary edition and i am obsessed with it and i cannot wait to read it and annotate it how the king of elfame learned to hate stories and the cruel prince i have the poppy wall in hardcover but i didn't anticipate how difficult it would be to find the second book in hardcover so and i really don't want my series to not be matching so i'm on the lookout for that if any of you have a hardcover of the dragon republic that you want to send my way listen i'd be up for it i have the year of the witching by alexis henderson 
and then my hardcover copy of Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff, and then piled up here, Iron Gold by Pierce Brown, Uprooted, Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon and Dear Evan Hansen. These are my Karen M. McManus books which all have the same like style cover and they all have sprayed edges so they're cool i've read one of us is lying and kind of it was kind of problematic like i'm not gonna lie i've also read two can keep a secret which i enjoyed a lot more i haven't read one of us is next or the cousins yet so i am excited to read them good girl or bad blood by holly jackson and a gathering of shadows which is another one that i bought secondhand and then came signed which was really exciting so i have a signed b.e schwab book for like five pounds second hand then i have the raven king by maggie stevarter law by alexander bracken which was the first book anyone ever bought me from my wish list my amazon wish list so that is a special book that i have then i have restore me by tahra mafi these are like the uk paperback editions which i really don't like compared to the american ones the devil wears prada and then champion by, by marie Lu. honestly the first two books are worth it just to get to this one atonement by ian McEwan. memoirs of a geisha this is another nia stibby book it's man of the house and it is equally as funny and heartwarming as love nina uh the goldfinch by donna tart i do have the secret history but i think it's also at uni and then i have vicious and vengeful and these are the hard covers and they are so pretty and they also have like the ribbon bookmarks and then at the top i just have perks being a wallflower and then underneath those i have my huge barnes and noble special edition of anna karenina by tolstoy this has got gold gilded edges it's absolutely enormous it's got a little ribbon bookmark but this is a really special book for me because i bought it with the birthday money i got from my great granddad before he passed away i keep the birthday card that he got for me in there i think it's the last thing he ever wrote so that's really special book means a lot to me but obviously it's not really a book that you can like sit and annotate so i'm gonna buy just like a paperback copy of anna karenina before i read it this is probably one of the most special books in my whole collection this is my little politics shelf these this one and the one underneath it is usually covered by my chair so you don't really see it very often and this as you can see is a very messy shelf because i've got try and cram everything onto it so i have a big stack of books here i have i have my first copy of what happened because i have three copies of that which was the book hillary clinton published after the election the secretary which is about her time as secretary of state kamala harris's book and then coalition by david laws about the conservative liberal democrat coalition gordon brown's autobiography because i just like collecting prime minister's autobiographies <laughs> bill clinton's which is enormous and i will probably never read but i feel like it was a good addition right and then margaret thatcher's autobiography the Death Downing Street years. I would like to clarify, not a Thatcherite, not a Tory, but I do just like collecting politicians' bi biographies. Then I have these, which don't fit anywhere, <laughs> which is Plato's Republic and The Prince by Machiavelli. I do a politics degree, so obviously I need the text. These two that I didn't take, they're Wordsworth books. Then I have Hard Choices, which is the book Hillary Clinton published about her time in sec as Secretary of State. It takes a village. I think it's about like children and raising children. She published it when she was first lady. My Own Story by Emily Pankhurst, which has the cover from suffragette the movie and then i have my big collection of alistair campbell diaries so i have two in paperback volume two and three they're all second hand because i cannot justify buying them straight out but you know i have a big book of pictures that diane walker took of hillary clinton which is like a coffee table book and doesn't fit anywhere i have living history this is her autobiography that she published her first one another biography of her more alistair campbell diaries this is the first one i'm about i'd say a third of the way through that's like as far as we've got so far this cute little pocket book which i can't get out because it's trapped in but it is basically a collection of like 20th century newspaper headlines and i used to read that to get to sleep so that's where my love of 20th century news and history came from then i have the establishment by owen jones was my first ever assignment at uni write a book review so i annotated it and it has all my little tabs in little, i wrote little summaries on post-it notes all the way through i got first in that so you know that worked quite well tony blair new britain which is a manifesto i think is the manifesto for new labor politics for thatcherism and then i have crisis by sylvia wolby which is the only book i've had to buy so far other than owen jones which i chose to buy because i could not find that textbook anywhere and i had to buy it for my politics of crisis module which i'm still a bit mad about because i hated that module and I again i apologize for the shaking but the best way to film this is just like this because it doesn't go that short 
but this is like my what my mum would call odds and sod shelf so it's just anything that i didn't know where to put or couldn't find a space for in the rainbow so i have quicksilver by dean cooch i just did a campaign for amazon with and then i have the last three books in the miss peregrine series which we all know are not as good as the other <laughs> three books the original trilogy i have graceling which sam sent me the monsters of rookhaven the caravel series which is really hard to fit in a rainbow because of like the stripes but that's that's a fun fact i have imagine me and defy me by Tahra Mafi, and then The One by Kira Cass, Casual Vacancy, this is the second book in the American Royal series, and then Reasons to be Cheerful by Nina Stibby, which is her latest release, which I haven't read yet, but I know I'm gonna absolutely adore. Then I have Attachments by Rainbow Rowell, Always and Forever Lara Jean, which for some reason came as a hardback when I ordered it, doesn't fit with the rest of them. Then I have The Royal We, which is a royal romance and I'm a bit obsessed with. I have The Shadows of Rookhaven, which is the sequel to The Monsters, Layla by Colleen Hoover and then I have Dune, The Outlaws, Scarlet and Brown, The Ivory Key, this is City and the City which I got for Christmas honestly no clue and then Dark Matter which looks really cool and spooky. This is my purple shelf, which I wish I could have higher up, but just does not fit anywhere else. And apparently I don't have very many purple books because it sort of goes into like black at the end. So I have another candle and this one is Book Girlfriend because we all know I have a lot of book girlfriends. I have Wayfarer by Alexandra Bracken. This is Sweet and Bitter Magic, which is more gay witches. Amazing. Fair Fractured Light. Daisy Jones and the Six, obviously amazing. All of my love. And then in this stack, I just have China Rich Girlfriend, Unravel the Dusk by Elizabeth Lim, which is a fun story because i ordered both of these the first one is spin the dawn spin the dawn got cancelled and i just never rebought it so i have the sequel but not the first one blue lily lily blue spinning silver practical magic which i love so much and it's annotated um the dream thieves which i got second hand if you couldn't tell <laughs> furthermore by tahara mafi sky beyond the storm by sabbat tahir which is the fourth book in the ember in the ashes series so now that series is finished i guess i can finally read it the ladies guide to petticoats and piracy this is hello girls which is like kind of oceans eight like high style it's i loved it or thalma and louise sort of in a book form and young adult it was really fun these witches don't burn more gay witches amazing the sweet far thing by libba bray girls of paper and fire uh ruthless gods obviously a little life we love we stand breaks you the raven boys is this first book then these two are two i try to hide because i hate mass market paperbacks and both of these i accidentally bought as mass market paperbacks so i have the rules of magic which is another one of the prequels to practical magic and a discovery of witches which i meant to buy in big paperback but came it's a tiny little math market, so I'm learning to love these two, but I will probably rebuy them at some point. This shelf is really hard to keep neat. So Tales of the Peculiar by Ransom Riggs, which is absolutely stunning book. It's kind of like the peculiar version of Tales of Beedle the Bard. It's like all the like folklore and stories, but it's so pretty. I mean, look at the gold embossed. Oh, I love it. Then I have House of Salt and Sorrows. I have The Ones We're Meant to Find. Obviously, my favourite of all time, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, my baby. Up here, I have my other mass market paperback that I never meant to buy, which is Shadow of Night. Break the Fall by Jennifer Iacopelli, which is another gymnastics book, and I adore it. Everyone needs to read this. It's so good. The, the gymnastics in it, like the sporting elements, are so accurate that I just, I love it. I adore it. Paradise Lodge by Nina Stibby, which I haven't read yet, but I need to. Requiem by Lauren Oliver. We Were Lies by E. Lockhart. The Selection and Passenger. And then this is Good Omens, and it's the, the TV show tie-in edition. This is We Unleash the Merciless Storm, which is the sequel is it the sequel it's either the first book or the sequel i can't remember which order they go into um we set the dark on fire two tj Klum books so i have the house in the cerulean sea and under the whispering door which i'm very excited to read cytonic which is the third book in the skyward series we are not like them the queen of nothing which i just want to say this doesn't deserve the hate it gets girl serpent thorn which i'm pretty sure is sapphic again but better by christine ruccio which i've tabbed up and annotated i read it just as i was about to start university about how Shane copes with and makes the most of year abroad at a UK university. So I read this at probably the perfect time. Then I have Better Together, also by Christine Riccio, which I think is about sisters. So that's going to be a fun read. 112263 by Stephen King. I am so excited for because I'm absolutely a 
addicted to like alternate history what if this had happened what if germany had won world war ii what if 9 11 had never happened there are so many books like that that i've found that i think that's my favorite bookish niche i'm obsessed this is kingdom of souls and i think it's the illumicrate edition which i got off ebay yes it has these really cool stenciled edges i think it's signed uh by rena baron i've never bought a bookish box in my life but i have so many of like the second hand versions of the book it's quite fun me before you this is get a life chloe brown by Talia Hibbert which I think has chronic illness rep which is why I bought it and then second place by Rachel Cusk down here I have my other two copies of what happened so the reason I have three copies is because I went to see Hillary Clinton when she did the Cheltenham Literature Festival which I've already talked about how much I love we all got a copy of the book I'd already bought so I now have like three copies of it this was my first attempt at ever annotating anything which has all my paper tabs in it so at least I have more copies of the book to go through and actually annotate properly with a critical eye now I'm not just like gay and obsessed and I have two more biographies because as I said I was obsessed with Hillary Clinton and then just loads of notebooks and stickers and that's a battery a glasses case stuff that came off my pin board so yeah this down here is just a mess because it is usually covered by my chair and will be again in a minute if you've made it all the way to the end you honestly you deserve a medal you deserve here take a medal thank you so much for watching these are my bookshelves i hope you like them if you have any comments or thoughts or questions or you want to share your bookshelves with me drop a comment and a like and maybe subscribe and i will see you all again soon bye